What's up, YouTube? Um, today I'm going to be showing you guys my build order for uh, Ottoman's Fast Castle. Uh, this was in a live game, so I didn't record it. Like the to the actual like normally, what I would do for a build order guide is play it against an AI and make sure I get the build absolutely perfect. But this is going to be more of like a live look at how I uh, how I use this build on the ladder. So it's probably not going to be 100% perfect, but that's okay. I'm still going to open military school um, and try to get value out of uh, my early spearmen. So, um, you know, it's not just like a straight fast castle without like doing anything else, but it is going to be a pretty fast castle. Um, and did he go two scouts here? Oh, no, 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 the pro it counts as a military. So this is against HRE. Um, I like to use this build mostly against HRE. I also use this build sometimes against an English that's going two town centers or three town centers. And um, I'll go fast castle and get the relics. So, but you could use this build in other matchups as well if you're just looking for another build to use sometimes as Ottomans. You just need to be careful. Any build, anytime you're going fast castle with pretty much any sieve, um, you really need to be wary of, like, if your opponent's massive units in feudal and is about to attack, so, um, it's always good to be scouting, obviously, in any game, make sure that your opponent isn't gonna kill you, right? So I was, I have a game, actually, that will be on YouTube soon, um, where I was trying to do this build against HRE, and, uh, I had already played against that player once before and executed this build and beaten them, so the next time... They started massing units in Feudal as HRE, and uh, I was going for this build from the start of the game, and I had to adjust mid-game and just make units in Feudal. Um, so yeah, you're going to have to adjust sometimes, but overall, um, situationally, this build can be really, really good. So um, yeah, it's really good against HRE, because HRE typically goes for Fast Castle and for Relics, and uh, we're going to be getting the Relics. Uh, that is our main goal, so... We're going to be denying the relics by getting them ourselves and um, trying to delay the HRE castle with as few units as possible. So, same opening build order as I would use in my um, feudal rush with Ottomans. I got a fat amount of sheep there, that's nice. And, um, yeah, we'll go 10 on food. We're going to go 3 on gold. Um, yeah, but you get the military, you got to do the military school opening as well, where you send the first five villagers to gather the stone. I said, um, you guys might be familiar with this from other build order videos, you should be, so that's why I didn't talk about it too much. But, um, yeah, it's just the same opening, feudal opening, as I would generally do. Now we'll be curing villagers onto wood. Now with this build order, we're not going to go nearly as many villagers on wood as we would for a feudal rush, so that's where the differences will start to kick in. And uh, we're moving out with the Spearmen to try and do um, some damage. Now, my opponent's build is very strange. Um, and he's running out of sheep under his town center, so... Not a good look. And he's only building the Aachen Chapel with one. He's already pulled villagers off of the gold way before my Spearmen even arrives. So I'm honestly just not sure what he's doing. But, um, yeah, this was, I mean... I don't know what, what rank my opponent was in this game, I forgot. Um, I think Diamond 1 or Plat 3 or something. But um, yeah, I mean, this is a build order that I execute very well at a Diamond to Conqueror level. I I win a lot of games with this build order. I honestly, very, very few times um, is my opponent uh, honestly able to respond correctly and get the relics so i think this build order is really strong and um right now i sh probably should have got my spearmen moving towards the gold a little bit faster um at this point i had figured out where the gold is just by process of elimination the reason i had parked the spearmen here for a second is just in case my opponent was going to tc i would try to delay that i honestly thought um i, I don't think i've scouted this gold yet but he just now moved back out onto it right as my spearman's about to make its way over there. So little things I could have improved on, you know, getting my spearman over to the gold quicker. But nice. But, uh, it's all good. So, 
Um, behind this, we've got seven villagers on wood now, which is too many. So that's me messing up the build order a little bit. Um, I will fix that in a second. I know that I do. But uh, right now we're kind of focused on the gold. And immediately my opponent responds kind of poorly to this. I mean, you don't really want to be completely pulling off the gold as an HRE trying to get to Castle Age and trying to get relics. Um, so he could have done several things, like he could fight this with the villagers, and he can pull the prelate out of the chapel to heal. If he pulls the prelate out to heal, um, he can usually get it back inside in time to inspire as well, and he can fight off the spearmen or kill it. But uh, his response was kind of poor, so I'm already feeling good about my position here, since he's completely pulled off the goal. And uh, hopefully I reorganize my macro in a second here. Yeah, I'm queuing two villagers to stone um, to gather for another military school. So that's what I, what I typically would like to do is have five villagers on wood, not seven. So I, uh, I sent too many to wood here. And then I would do two on stone. And then I would go to six on gold and everything else would go to wood. So I think in a minute here, I pull two of these wood villagers over to the food. But that's why I wanted to show you guys the live build order, because it's okay to make a few mistakes. Like, if you're delaying the gold here, that's extremely valuable. And I'm doing this with all free units right now. I haven't even made a military production building. I haven't paid for a unit, right? It's all coming from my military school. So if you're delaying the gold, you're doing well. Yeah, I'm just I'm just letting my spearman attack here. I'm very happy with this. Um, just the fact that he's not gathering gold at all, really good for me. And um, he's going for his own barracks at this point. So now from here, I like to get a stable to do a little bit more harass. So that's what I'm doing. All my um, my new villagers right now are going to gold. And I just went down to four villagers on wood. Um, like we talked about, I said five, but I think four is actually fine. But uh, the main reason I went down to four is because I had already overgathered some wood, right? So, actually, I might have... Yeah, I went down to four on wood. And um, we are at five on gold. So, I might have said six earlier. I think five is actually fine, especially if you don't get wheelbarrow you get wheelbarrow which i wouldn't suggest doing in a fast castle in a fast castle situation you don't want to go for these upgrades in feudal age right because you're just trying to get castle as soon as possible so at five oh i am sending a sixth villager out to gold so oh yeah six like i said and then everything else will be on food four on wood two on stone and um i noticed that there's a villager out here so i just send my third spearman to harass that one a little bit but it is taking damage to the town center, so I should have pulled it back earlier. So now the first minute arms is coming out. Now, he made two barracks, which is interesting, because um, I know that he's going for a fast castle, so this is a big commitment here with uh, two barracks. And, um, yeah, another thing, like, my opponent did not get any sheep. I don't know what, what happened with the scouting, but I got significantly more sheep and it's, there's probably sheep left on the map as well still in some places so that's a really big upside for me his sheep are also far from his town center like this walking distance isn't good so so when the minute arm comes out i just pull back the spearmen there's they don't need to fight the the minute arms like i just need to back off with this for now and keep these units alive so they can do some more harassing in a minute now, you can run circles around Minute Arms, and I'll show you that some more in a second. So, yeah, we are now 12 on food, 4 on wood, 6 on gold, 2 on stone. All new villagers going on to the sheep. And we'll pull off the stone um, as well after we get... I think I go for 200 stone, is what I usually do. That way I can get two more military schools um, as soon as possible and 
when I hit Castle Age. I can get one more in Feudal Age and then another additional one as soon as I hit Castle. Or as soon as I get the uh, Vizier point. Well, no, my Vizier point won't be going towards extra military schools, so not at first. So now that the Sapah here are coming, I made one from the stable. I got one for free from the military school. We're just going to keep trying to pressure and delay. The whole goal is to delay here, and my opponent's struggling because of his lack of sheep, so that is unfortunate for them. So I already picked the Imams as my first um, Vizier point, because I want to grab the relics the second that we hit Castle Age, right? So I'm going out for this relic, I think. I maybe even could have gone for this one first. And then I'll send this Imam out in a second as well. But this is where the real action is happening. Um, he, My opponent's chosen to defend with men at arms. And um, I just don't think that was the best option. I think that they should have gone for a couple spear, spearmen. And just kind of parked them on uh, the resources they need to defend. Which is these berries and the gold. Instead he made men at arms. Which is okay. He's also chasing the units with men at arms, so um, not super good for him, right? Because look at what I've done here. He's chasing all my spearmen with the two men at arms, so I just split off the two Sapahi to harass the gold. Frustrating for him to deal with, and this is what I talked about, just getting as much value out of as few units as possible. So now he's got to pull the men at arms to chase the Sapahi, so these can turn around. And um, get some more get some more damage in themselves. And I just the, these minute arms are never going to catch the sapahi or the or the spearmen really. They're just too slow. So I'm just going to keep doing little poke harassment. And we're about to hit castle age. And I over macroed the gold. Like I could have grabbed an upgrade or maybe gone five on gold. So that's something to consider as well. But the big thing is delaying your opponent with your units. That's the big thing. That is the, the key feature of this role. Because if you don't delay your HRE opponent, they're definitely going to hit Castle before you, and they're they're going to get at least two or three relics. So you've got to delay with your with your units. Got to, got to. So, yeah, this is, this is you know, really just what I want to highlight here. And I think at this point... I'm about to build my Castle Age landmark. I know that my opponent's not ready. Um, just because I know that they don't have sheep. I've seen them on the berries. I've pushed them off the berries. They're building farms. They built, you know, these buildings. So I know my opponent's not quite ready for castle. So at this point, I end up just diving the gold and trying to get a kill or two. Um, because I know that I'll be grabbing the relics in just a second here. There's a villager kill. And all these villagers, like, even if though they're not, um, you know, not all of them are dying. There's just lots of, we got 10 idols right now. Maybe he's trying to place his landmark, but he's not quite ready. Um, meanwhile, our landmark is building for Castle Age already, and we already have an Imam in position on two relics. So this is just a really good position. From here, I was already pretty sure I would win the game. But I'll just show you guys the rest real quick. So I lost all the units now, but I don't care. I'm totally, like... He has no idea if I'm making more units or not. Like... I don't know if his scout's even alive. His scout is alive somewhere, but... He... You know, unless he scouted my landmark, he's still kind of, like, trying to defend his base. And even though all of my units died, like, if he decides to send these men-at-arms and spearmen to my base and try and do damage, it's going to take way too long. I would easily have out some uh, some units to defend that. And I'd probably be Castle Age way before they got here. They're just too slow um, on this all-infantry comp. And we've also left a lot of low-health villagers to try and pick off later. So, there's lots of good things here. 
My opponent's still not building the Castleage Landmark, by the way. So. Yeah, HRE should be, you know... Like I said, if you leave your HRE opponent untouched, they're gonna most likely hit Castle before you, so... So now I'm just sending some units out towards the relics to make sure that um, I have something to defend the Imams if I need to. And I just send one Sapahi and my scout to do a little bit more harass. And our Castle Age Landmark is almost finished, and he's just now starting the Regnets. And we're distracting here. All of, if all of his units are chasing this Sapahi, then none of his units are on the map stopping me from getting relics. So we can immediately grab these relics, these two that we're on. And uh, got another Sapahi looping around to try and do some more damage on this side. While this Sapahi tries to do this side. And just, even if it's just one unit on each side, guys, attacking from multiple directions um, is always going to be distracting for your opponent and frustrating. And I can focus down low health villagers out here. Doesn't look like I got the micro properly down for that, but that's okay. It's still it's still a distraction. It's still damage done. And I still, like, I haven't lost this unit, right? Like, you don't want to lose track of your units and lose them for free, so. I did lose this Sapahi, it looks like. I don't know where it went. It was out here just a second ago. I guess maybe it wandered in. Oh, there it is. I just couldn't see it. But behind this, like, I've already got two relics coming home. Now, what you can do is if you don't have the mosque ready, you can drop the relic on the ground in your base and just go out for the next one. So, at this point, I know that he's going to be going for this relic, the closest one to his base, most likely, and trying to secure that. Meanwhile, I'm sending, I'm about to send my, I could have done this even faster, but I'm about to send my Imams back out for these two right here. And if you secure four relics versus an HRE's one relic, you're in a really, really good position. And I almost stopped this one as well, the fifth relic, but I do not manage to stop it. From what I remember. So I probably could have even... This is definitely something I could have improved on, because I definitely could have had more units out here and and stopped that. And I actually just chased down the, uh, the prowet here, but I don't quite get it, so... But behind this, my Imam's moving for the 4th and 5th Relic, so... The poor HRE player is only going to have one. And from here, it's just a matter of ending the game. I already know that my opponent is on a minute arms, heavy comp minute arms, and um, spearmen. So it's natural for me to just go crossbows here. And that's what I'm doing. I've got one archery range producing crossbows, dropping a second archery range. Um, meanwhile, guys, I didn't really talk about my macros. I hit castle age. But um, I did move a bunch more villagers to wood so I can get more production bu buildings and a bunch more villagers to gold so I can get upgrades. Um, yeah. It looks like I had mined too much stone earlier, so that was a mistake in this game. But I already have the stone for my next two military schools, which is nice. So, Just getting the four relics, though, is just, like, absolutely massive. And um, at this point, I know that all I need to do is get a nice little attack in in the next couple minutes, and I'll win the game. But let's talk about other situations here. Um, if you're playing against English and you go for all the relics as a way to like make up for them going multiple town centers, uh, one thing you could do here is go for your own second town center. So you would fast castle into a second town center. So I would... Um, Probably have a lot less villagers on food in that situation, and a few less on gold, and be mining stone for my second TC right... I would have started already, probably right away as I hit um, castle. And uh, that way you can get your second TC down, and you don't get too far behind on bills. 
and you also are making up for the difference in bills with your five relics. So that is another thing you could do to um, extend your lead or, you know, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, that's typically something I do against English or maybe a 2TC HRE. If HRE went 2TC from the beginning here, what I would have done with my initial units is try to delay the TC, and then I still would have gone Fast Castle, grabbed the relics, and then I would consider dropping a second town center, just like I just talked about. But in this game, I knew that all I needed to do was just mass units and go um, attack, because... Not only because I gathered the four relics, but also because of the tremendous amounts of idle time I've caused, and also getting a few villager kills. I'm four villagers ahead right now, so that is pretty nice. Um, and I'm trying to do more harass with knights as I build up a big force to push, so. And if I was microing this unit properly, I could have immediately killed this villager. I probably could have killed this villager and this villager. But um, instead, I ran it into the woodline and attacked move. So it's still damage done, but it doesn't look like... Well, I am going to kill a villager or two still. But I could have got more damage done if I was microing that knight properly. And at this point, he's capturing a sacred site. Because, you know, what else can he do to get gold per minute? He's moving out for a relic I got a long time ago. And uh, I see this prelate, so I just go kill it. And yeah, we're about ready for a push here in a second. Like, there's more archery ranges and another blacksmith. I just want to get a nice mass of crossbows, send my mangonels out behind it, maybe a few knights as front line. So, um, still making some small mistakes, you know. Like, I, I have this producing spearmen, which I don't really need. Um, but I did get my other two military schools on um, men at arms, which. The main reason I'm making minute arms from them is just as like a frontline unit, and because I didn't have the busy A point to make knights yet, so. And uh, at this point, I feel confident in my army size to go ahead and make the push to end the game. So I'll be doing that in a second. But yeah, uh, my opponent is very dead here. Decapping the sacred site over here. And yeah, just looking at the army, it's just it's just not gonna cut it. And he's built more barracks. Uh, I mean what he needs right now is horsemen. Would be the unit he should be going for, so. And yeah, this army's gonna crush this, so. This game is over, um, the fight happens in just a second, and that's it, he just GG's after the fight, so. I'm gonna speed it up till we get to this fight here. Yeah, that's really it. I mean, the game was kind of lost from, um... Lost once I, like, delayed his castle age as much as I did, because from that point on, like, I'm gonna get the relics, you know? And if the H HRE that builds a Regnance and only gets one relic is really sad. It's not a happy camper, so... He just goes ahead and forfeits there. I also had two knights killing gold bills in the back, so. Yeah, that's it. That's it for the Ottomans. Um, you know, the Ottomans Fast Castle build order. So, like, if you want it, if you want to have the numbers perfectly, I would say, um, you know, do the traditional opening. So, 10 on food, and then 3 on gold. Then you should go to f up to four on wood, and put two on stone for your military schools, and um, I think five is the is a good number for gold. So put five on gold, and all of the rest of your villagers go to food until you can build your castle age landmark, and um, you're gonna drop a stable to do harass, 
and the feudal age and that's it that's all the that's the only um only military building you need to build in feudal age besides maybe a second military school when you have the wood and the stone for it and yeah that's going to be it so like comment subscribe uh let me know in the comments what kind of guide you want to see next thanks for watching uh and have a good day